after President Sarkozy found a clean break with the past. Vive la France! France is uncertain about its future. With its society polarized, its military back in NATO, and its sovereignty undermined by Brussels, we ask just how American is the French president? Le cœur de l'Amérique. And what's to become of France's independent foreign policy? This is Empire. Hello and welcome to Empire. Visit, bienvenue. I am Marwan Bishara. Ever since President Sarkozy was elected on the basis of a clean break with the past, France has been living a paradox. Paris embraced the Anglo-Saxon neoliberal model after decades of resistance, only to see the financial recession discredit it and the West abandon it. And soon after Sarkozy expressed vocal support of President Bush's neoconservative foreign policy and his war on terror, America elected a progressive president committed to reverse those very same policies. Now, two years after taking office, President Sarkozy is criticized for monopolizing power internally and pursuing false grandeur internationally. His unconditional support of Israel, hostility towards Iran, contempt towards Turkey, and abandonment of France's traditional Arab policy are raising eyebrows in Europe and the Muslim world, and leaving the French lost for answers. Before we discuss this and much more, Tim Tate recaps two years of French pride and prejudice. Once upon a time, France saw itself like this. But now there's a new president for the celebrity age. I'm the boss man. With a new and highly divisive way of doing international politics. I am the king of bling bling, okay? The great plan was to uh, restore French national influence. The closer to America, the more loyal to America. This French recalibration could come back uh, to haunt France. Sarkozy's appeal as a populist leader was based on his no-holds-barred handling of riots in Paris's bleak suburbs, calling the impoverished immigrant rioters scum. But as Sarkozy turned public abuse into a new presidential art form, get the f out of here, dumbass, France has begun to wonder if it knew what it was doing. The French president, when he takes office, the oath that he swears is to incarnate the French Republic to incarnate the nation. Would you like to see just beside me? Now, it has got to the point where people feel disgust and exasperation, a sort of nausea at this character who's everywhere. Sarkozy's apparent eagerness to pour very public scorn on many of the world leaders with whom he shares the stage has turned the dignified image of the French president into a cartoon-like caricature. President Barack Obama, weak, inexperienced, and badly briefed. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, lacking in intellectual stature. Spanish Prime Minister Jose Luis Zapatero, not very clever. Manuel Barroso, leader of the European Commission, totally absent. Very often, we feel that he's shooting himself in the foot. It's as if he found himself in absurd, self-destructive situations. Uh, absurd considering his intelligence. Sarkozy's personal pro-American sentiments have led to a fundamental shift in France's international alliances. In 1966, General de Gaulle pulled France out of NATO because the alliance was dominated by America. Forty years on, Sarkozy announced a clean break with the past and took France fully back into the NATO fold. This claim to being uh, the best ally of uh, the United States in Europe, even more proactive than the uh, UK by many standards, is certainly the main difference with uh, Sarkozy's uh, diplomacy. 
In the teeth of bitter opposition inside France, Sarkozy has also sent 1,000 additional troops to support the US war in Afghanistan. Sarkozy has also drastically realigned French alliances in the Middle East. France was actually um, not conceived as a friend of Israel until Sarkozy came into office. Israel. Israel must know that Israel is not alone. Without question, Sarkozy represents a shift in France's recent uh, posture in the Middle East. Sarkozy's very public overtures to Israel are based on a gamble that France can play both sides of the Arab-Israeli crisis. The problem is that he seems to have stacked all his bets on one side. He's not working on the Palestinians. This makes a big difference with the previous team. Uh, we used to have some very strong links with civil society in Palestine, with Palestinian leaders, and now we're just completely hands off from the big mess that's now happening between Gaza and the West Bank. So certainly this is a double-edged sword because it can work both ways. And the bet is of course not to lose it on the other side. But the failure of the Mediterranean Union, Sarkozy's earlier high-profile attempt at geopolitics, doesn't bode well for this latest high-stakes gamble. It worked with the French uh, to, if you want to, boost Sarkozy's popularity inside. Um, but the, the objective result in terms of international policies is quite a disaster. Two years after it elected him, an unsettled and embarrassed France is now starting to fight back against Sarkozy's new ultra-pragmatic and highly personalized politics. As France bids to reclaim its place in the world, it's caught between its historic sense of exceptionalism and the hip-hop hyperactivity of Israel and Washington's new best friend. I am the king! Joining me in the studio is uh, Edouard Plenel, former editor-in-chief of Le Monde and managing editor of uh, Mediapart, and uh, Professor Anne-Marie uh, Dulegrenec, uh, who's a director of research at the Center des Etudes de Recherche Internationale, as well as Chris Dickey, the uh, bureau chief for Newsweek in Paris, been there for some 18 years, and also a regional editor for the magazine. And last but not least is uh, Mr. Eric Chevalier, who is a special advisor to the French government on foreign affairs. Welcome to you all, madam, gentlemen. Edwin, I would like to start with you. You just published a book where you basically uh, made the very harsh criticism of the French president as being authoritarian, as having almost launched a, a war against the liberty of press in France. Would yes. you care to? Yes, I think uh, Nicolas Sarkozy has authoritarian tendencies. He cannot say we, oui, like Barack Obama, you know, yes, we can. He always says, I, my, me. It's not only an hyper president, but also an ego president. He has restricted in our country all the counter powers and increase the presidential power. A big power with no limits, no balance. He just reformed the constitution to empower the presidency even more than it yes, was powerful. Yes, yes, and the worst and the best <laughs> example is the media. Sarkozy is really close, uh, has friendly relation with all the owners of the great private media in our country. But he has imposed that uh, he will be the only one to decide, to choose the chief of the public, French, television, mm -hmm. radio. He interferes That's in the actual appointment exactly. of who's going to be Ex in the media. And another point, uh, there was uh, an old crime forgotten for very old time in France. And finally, he promoted this old crime. And knew, you know what crime it mm -hmm. was, the offense to the head of state. Mm -hmm. That's meant himself. That's reminiscent of third world countries where you cannot say much perhaps, against their world leaders. That's, that's my point of view. I, I agree with the report. We, we have a sort of king of bling bling, yes. And Marie, do you think this authoritarianism within France is reflecting on the way 
President Sarkozy is dealing with his European or other counterparts around the world? I, I think so, th though it's a bit more difficult to do, but uh, we had the feeling, or I had the feeling times and again, that he was replicating outside of the country what he is doing inside the country, brushing people aside, uh, taking the forefront. Uh, and you can do that in France, unfortunately, because he is the head of state. And uh, he, as uh, Edoui was saying, he is putting friends in place. He is ignoring institutions. Mm -hmm. I would underline that. I mean, he doesn't have a grasp of, of, of what institutions are good for, uh, unfortunately for France. And France. So he improvises a lot of the things he does? I think so. And, and also, unfortunately, France has a streak for that. I mean, there is this weakness for strong leaders. But you can't do that on, on, on the European scene, on the international scene. You, you can't just brush aside the uh, president of the uh, European Council who happens to be the Czech Prime Minister just because it's a small country. Does that remind you of another president, uh, Chris, maybe your former president? He was also criticized you for... You mean George W. Bush? Yes. No, not really, Marlon. I think uh, George W. Bush is a has a kind of a native intelligence, and he grew up in a political family. But I think Sarkozy is a political genius. I think uh, that's not a value judgment, that's just an observation. I think that his ability to destroy the opposition on the right by using the immigration issue and the riots in 2005, but also long before that, and then his ability to destroy the opposition on the left as well, you know, he's basically left himself in a position of enormous power because there's no credible opposition in the country. But you know, that makes him more of a, as they say in French, politique de politicien, rather than makes him a head of state. This is more of a street. Well, he, Smart does, yes, he comes across with that. I mean, state. But like a lot of geniuses, he also projects a certain kind of instability. There is that ego element that uh, that everybody's talking about. Uh, he, you know, he he is out there in front. And one of the things that's striking about him is you don't. I never have the feeling that he's lying. I have the feeling that he's telling too much of the truth. He's too direct. He thinks that it's crazy to take France out of the presidency of the, of the European Union at a time of crisis and put in the Czechs who have an unstable government that eventually falls during their presidency. But uh, uh, Eric, uh, this very uh, policy of using a lot of things that were used in America, such as the politics of fear, uh, we've heard different language from this president than his predecessors on the question, for example, of the war on terror and of France being a democracy and exposed uh, to Islamic terrorism, as he puts it. Do you think that is used in order to strengthen his leadership in the country? First of all, I'm a bit surprised because are we talking about France in 2009? Uh, are we talking about a country uh, in a different period of what we are living in? I don't recognize France in what you should, and I don't recognize France in the comments that we heard. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's not easy to make five minutes on France without even mention on French foreign policy without mentioning the EU presidency. Right. So just remind you that mm -hmm. everybody agreed that France, were, France and Europe were, were back in the second half of 2008. Yes. France is the first country who has accepted to welcome an ex detainee from Guantanamo a few days ago. Okay, on a human rights ground. Because we thought uh, many hesitation. I'm sorry, did we? But I mean, can we just stick to facts first? Yes. But isn't it isn't it the I fact he's trying to please President Obama as well? He's first, and he's first trying to be coherent with what we said. Mm -hmm. We are supporting an anti-terrorism approach, which is in accordance with human rights grounds. This is why we always said that we would have to. I mean, when Guantanamo has to be closed. And we were extremely happy when President Obama decided to close Guantanamo. Mm -hmm. This is on these grounds. After some hesitations, maybe, but we are the first country in Europe. The others are more hesitating than us. US is more mm -hmm. hesitating than us. When, when it was said that we are only sticking to a pro-American strategy on a lot of issues, that was exactly the, exactly the contrary. I can just give you examples on issues where we had ideas, we had approaches, that the U.S. finally joined. I would say so on Afghanistan, the comprehensive approach. I would say so on Syria. I heard that our only approach was to be close to the Israelis, which is absolutely wrong. The idea was to be close to the Israelis and the other countries. The, on the Palestinians, I heard that we were not close to the Palestinians. 
So please, honestly, I don't understand what we describe. Okay. This is not the France that I know. V vive la différence. <laughs> I, I don't recognize my country. Uh, there was, uh, you know, the European Union, uh, the, presi the French presidency. Mm -hmm. It was France first. It was no coordination, no consensus between Absolutely. all the nations. Untrue. Exam one one, Give me one an example. example. Yes, please. The Mediterranean, Mediterranean, mm -hmm. Mediterranean Union. Uh, it was a, uh, really a French creation. That means all the countries of the area, including Israel and Palestine, to reproach them from Europe, a good idea. Arrived the criminal war in Gaza. Where was the Mediterranean Union? Nowhere. It was just an illusion. There is Before. a great gap between words, speeches, and the reality of this politics. Second example, no, but our, France, a, our France can understand the world, its complexity, its diversity, without understanding complexity and diversity of its own people, of its own nation. We are the only democracy with the Ministry of Immigration and National Identity. It's really a... You think a it leads to more exclusion it's of exclusion other identities? It's exclusion for all the people in the suburbs. Third example, the speech in Dakar two years ago. Our French president, which said to the, to the American to the African people, the African man is not under in history and is still near nature and childhood. Where do you hear that? There, there was at, at, the, uh, at the time of Obama. But really, this government is the French kind of a neoconservative approach. Can, can I just but give let, you let, let's, let's allow uh, Marie just to... I, I would like to give both good points and bad points. Yeah. I mean, and to say like a teacher. here, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is <a> deformation <laughs> professional. Right. Uh, but I mean, there they, they are good elements in, in this policy, but it's very hard to connect the dots. Uh, and, and there are two things. The first one, the the, the, the um, European, uh, the presidency of the European Council. I mean, that that's true. We have done a, uh, we. Pre presi President Sarkozy, uh, President of the European Council, e Europe has done a number of good things, including Georgia, and trying to gather the Europeans around regulation and so on and so forth. But the bad thing, the bad point is that Nicolas Sarkozy is being to, to steal the show. And if the substance is Europe, still the style is French. And another example is the friendship with the United States, proclaiming friendship with the United States, that's wonderful. Going back to NATO, I think it was ending a, a sort of, uh, something which was becoming a farce eventually. But now we have to deliver. And where is the policy? To wh what makes us different from the other or, or gives us a policy? What is the policy behind this One now? moment. Could uh, Christopher, you're an outsider mm. as well as an insider to the French politics. Tell me, I get the feeling that France, France's presidency, is in limbo. It's almost schizophrenic. It came on an agenda that is a bit neoliberal, a bit neoconservative, a bit break with the past, clean break, rupture with the past. Mm -hmm. But it was faced with the global recession, it faced with a new presidency in America, and all of a sudden, we don't know exactly where France is standing on some of the fundamental issues. Well. I think, in fact, that Sarkozy is very realistic and incredibly energetic. And I don't want to sound like I'm a shill for Sarkozy, but I think that, for instance, in reaction, reacting to the crisis uh, at a time when, in fact, it was the American government in an election year that really was in limbo. We, had, we hadn't had the elections yet in the United States. We didn't know who the next president would, would be. The campaigns were going on. George W. Bush looked like, a, as they say in America, a deer caught in the headlights. And Sarkozy was saying, two weeks after Lehman Brothers went down, he gave a speech in Toulouse that said, this is the end of a world. This basically, we have to reorient ourselves completely. And he began to put policies in motion that did that. And I was watching that in Paris, and I think, I thought, my god, this guy is incredible. And again and again, the things that he's done, actually, 
uh, have been things that we've seen Obama do. Uh, some of the rescue package. Uh, but that's not what he ran on as president. No, no, but that doesn't mean he's schizophrenic. So it just means pragmatic. he's realistic. I think he's completely but there pragmatic. There was no crisis at that time. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I mean, it's normal that it was not planned when he was elected because there was no crisis at that time. Yes. Except that during the General Assembly of the UN, a year before the crisis, he said that the financial system was at extreme risk. Okay? It was one of the few voices in the world who anticipated the crisis, first of all. Who really pushed for the G20 process? But you G20 see, that's what troubles me about it, Eric, is that the fact that he ran on an agenda against the welfare state, but he went to the G20 defending the welfare state. No, first of all... You don't find that paradoxical, schizophrenic. I mean, you call it schizophrenic, I call it just adapting to the realities, okay. I mean, which is probably important, you know. Okay. Do you prefer people who will certainly not take into consideration such a crisis? So he's wrong, he was wrong then? Would you pref I, I won't say so. There was no crisis at that time. So please, I think I, we should really put things in, in perspective. First of all, on the, on the limbo, I don't see the limbo. I see a dynamics. The idea of being in a relationship with the Americans, which is not schizophrenic, which is now- Meaning he's totally in bed with America now? No, oh, that's so. exactly then the contrary. Right. But it's a normal relationship, which before, in France, for the Americans, when French was speaking, it was obvious for the, for the American that he was saying no because he was anti-American, right. which was useless. Yes. Now what happens? The Americans understand that because they understand that we are not enemies, that when we say something, especially when we say no, there is a meaningful reason for saying no, which is a huge difference. And the reality, again, on Lebanon, on Kosovo, we, we're gonna on Lebanon, on Kosovo, on Syria, on Afghanistan, and on several other issues, this is our position that finally the American took into consideration. Could you please hold I that hold, thought? I but that was your introduction no, no, could you, could you hold that thought because Absolutely. that's what we're going to discuss right after we come back from the break? But before we do, I will leave you with a special report on the politics of the Francophonie from Rwanda to Lebanon onto the United Arab Emirates. It was a language of love, of culture, and of diplomacy. <laughs> Not anymore. In the battle for a global lingua franca, the word on the street from Lebanon to Rwanda is more likely to be English than French. Question about, about Rwanda. In Rwanda, the French embassy, the French cultural center, the French school and the French radio station have all been shut down. There is a population of 120 million people. 100 million people speak English. This is a big reason to change. French is being banned from the classroom in favor of English. Using this structure here. And Rwanda has applied to join the British Commonwealth. It's even establishing its own national cricket board. Je t'aime au passé, je t'aime au présent. As the English gang bowls over Rwanda, in Lebanon, the traditional Middle Eastern francophonie heartland, French is also slipping down the batting order. Néanmoins, il est vrai que on ne parle pas français partout. It's true that French is no longer spoken everywhere. All the Lebanese have to speak Arabic, the mother tongue, and English. But a third language is always useful, and French is often that third language. The struggle for linguistic supremacy dates back to Napoleon's doomed battles with the British. Ever since, France has fought to match the dominance of the Anglophone world. And by resisting the creep of franglais phrases like le weekend, le podcast, and le parking, francophonie has been a key weapon. La bataille de français de la francophonie. The battle of la francophonie is not only the defense of the language against English or any other language, but to establish the teaching of French and to ensure its survival. And for President Nicolas Sarkozy, the battle is ongoing. Cette implantation militaire. This military presence will include air, sea, and land units of the French army. A new French naval base at Abu Dhabi will also be home to new outposts of the Sorbonne and the Louvre. 
a cultural front for Sarkozy's campaign to re-establish French influence in the world. Times are changing. France and the Francophonie are coming out of the traditional sectors and opening up to the world. For Nicolas Sarkozy, it's a simple equation. Vive la Francophonie, vive la France.